Welcome to Ask GMBN Tech. This is the weekly Q&A show. You ask the techie questions and we give you some sort of answers that hopefully help you on your way. If you've got any tech related mountain bike questions, get them in in the comments below. Use that hashtag Ask GMBN Tech or you can get them into our email address at hellotech at gmbn.com. Now this week's all focused around tyres because off the back of that Victoria factory tour video a few weeks back on GMBN Tech we got quite a lot of response so I've picked a bunch of those out and we're going to get cracking. Now first up is from Callum Spencer who says, did you get to see where they add the fishy smell to inner tubes? Um, no actually we didn't see any inner tube manufacturing, only the tyre side of things and to be honest there wasn't really that much in the way of abnormal smells in there, there's various different rubber compounds they all do smell uh, quite heady, I guess, um, but as you'd expect rubber to be as it would smell, you know, it's kind of a, a rich kind of smell. But I have got an answer for you from Ken at Victoria because um, I can't believe I didn't ask that question. Um, what I would have told you is, yeah, the age old thing people say is it's crushed up fish bones uh, in place of some sort of talc, which would kind of make sense because you're using something that's a waste material. Um, but what Ken says is the fishy smell can be a number of things, but usually results in the white powder you see in the tube. Typically, inner tubes are made using an extruder, which is essentially a huge pasta maker. In order to make the tube balls not stick together during curing, a white powder, which is calcium carbonate, uh, is placed on the inside of the tube in the process. As it turns out, calcium carbonate is the main component of certain things found in the ocean, such as pearls, shells of marine organisms, snail shells, etc. Uh, so there you go. So it kind of has got a bit of truth in that story with the uh, fish bones. Okay, next up is from Justin Fast. What does TPI actually mean? What makes a tyre tubeless? Do Sipes in tyres actually make that much difference? Um, okay, right, first up, TPI stands for threads per inch. Now, tyre carcasses and the casing itself, it's got a bunch of threads that run through it. Now, typically, the more amount of threads they have, the lighter and the more supple the tyre will be. Uh, and the opposite, the least amount, it's gonna be a bit tougher. And the reason for that is in a tyre with less TPI or a lower TPI count, um, it's gonna be thicker threads in there. So typically you'll see a real tough mountain bike tyre will have a lower TPI and a lightweight road tyre will have a high one. So on the screen right now is a Max's Minion in a 2.5. Now this particular one has a 60 TPI count and then there's also a road tyre called the High Road from Maxxis also and this one has 170 TPI. Um, now whilst that is generally the rule with the weights and stuff of the tyres, uh, other things do apply. So different tyre compounds have different weights different amounts of tyre tread and volume, obviously they're gonna affect things as well. So uh, that's just a general rule of count there. Uh, next up is making the tyre tubeless. So effectively is coating the inside with a layer of rubber, which means basically air can't escape through those threads, which are put in various pliers. So you get two ply and four ply style tyres for different disciplines. Pretty much liquid latex, which is essentially what you see in tyre tubeless solution, which really, that is where the idea came from to make tubeless tyre sealant was exactly what they put on the inside of the tyres. Uh, except when you buy the tyres, it has that stuff already on there, so the, the tyre itself will hold air into it. The solution that you put into tyres afterwards, that is there just to patch up holes as they occur. Uh, as for sipes, yeah, actually they do make a huge difference depending on the way that they're used on a tyre. Now, just for example, there's a tyre you can see on screen here from that factory tour inventory, and I think I did touch on it slightly in the video. So the sipes can affect how a certain knobble has effect on the ground. So for example, in this particular case, it's got three sipes on those leading knobs there. Now, the job of those is basically to allow the knob to flex and grip in as a the rider is climbing uphill so the, the nobles can deform around the terrain to give maximum amount of purchase but in the other direction they're quite stiff so it doesn't have the sipes reflecting out the other side which means when you're braking those nobles can cut back in but it's the same nobble it doesn't require two different nobles by having the sipes on one side you change the characteristics of that nobble the same thing applies with directional knobs that might be at a 45 degree angle so good for cornering to allow a bit more purchase for example or on the shoulders so you can have the shoulder be very stiff in one direction so it can't like lose traction, but it can deform when it's cutting into the ground and deforming over roots. So yeah, they can really customize the profile and the design and the way the tire basically is gonna handle by using sipes and also ramps on the novels. Okay, next up is from Del Scorch. Excellent job, Doddy and crew. Um, well, thank you very much. And it was just myself and Dan, Dan the cameraman uh, who made this video that you're watching right now, in fact. 
Um, my question is, do they have an objective test for grip in dirt, or does the data only come back from the field? Okay, so the tests in the factory really are just to test consistency of the way they're producing stuff and to make sure that there's consistency in the compounds of rubber and basically to test every stage of the production. Um, it's not there to test how they, they actually perform. So they will do tests on wet weather and stuff inside machines, but that's really to test the nature of the rubber that they're using, not the tread design. Tread design, they do that with real world testing. Like most bike manufacturers or component manufacturers, they have a real world team. They do a lot of data acquisition and they do testing in a variety of different conditions with different style riders, different wheel sizes, etc. to do that stuff. Now the guy that's behind the design of the Vittoria tires, his name is Ken Avery. Um, I'll leave it up to you guys to Google him if you want, but let's just say Ken is behind some of the world's best and most influential tyres. He's been in the business a long time, and the way he does tyre testing, it works. That's all I can say. Um, so I would say expect some very good things from Vittoria because they do very good and very in-depth real-world testing. Okay, next one, controversial. This one's from Peter Sulej. Are you A, sponsored by Vittoria instead of Conti, or is it a one-off situation? And B, Vittoria seems to make tires with uh, thread patterns copied from other companies just better made. Uh, well, firstly, no, it was a factory tour they invited us over there. It was too good an opportunity to make a really good in-depth video. So we worked with them to make that happen, and they showed us a lot of stuff that we're really lucky to see that I know for a fact a lot of other journalists didn't get to see. So I feel very privileged to actually see behind the scenes and see all of that nitty-gritty stuff. Um, no, we still run Continental tires here at GMBN. There's no change in that respect. Um, with respect to the tyre designs, I think you'll find with most tyre manufacturers, you're going to get similarities in certain types of tyre, and the reason for that is they work. You're always going to have something with a big, stiff shoulder pattern. Let's just say, for example, a Maxxis Minion as a front tyre. It's got a really defined shoulder, just like the uh, Vittoria Martello and just like the new Continental Trail King. So they all have a strong shoulder for a reason. It cuts in and it gives them a good predictable feeling on many surfaces. And all three of those tyres I just mentioned also have quite a heavy duty paddle style block design on them. Reason for that, it makes them predictable in a lot of situations. Obviously some tyres look more alike than others, um, but the reason for that is it works, they do this. But let's not forget that a tyre made by one company that looks very similar to a tyre made by another might handle completely differently. There's a lot of different factors in that, how thick the sidles are, how tall the tyre profile itself is, the rubber compounds that are used in there. There's an infinite amount of combinations to get a tire to feel just right. So you might find that you're running something that looks similar to another brand, but don't make that a direct comparison until you've ridden the one by another brand. They're all very different. Um, Dawn We Ride. Did anyone else notice the worker dumped the powder out the scoop, then reach back into the precisely measured powder, grab a handful and put it back into the scoop? Perhaps you could talk about how skilled these people are and use an example like the wheel build people that grab, grab the right length spokes um, yeah, you, you first mentioned this at Norco a while back. Um, yeah, I have to say the skill of the workers in, I mean, you're working in a factory, it's a highly trained environment because they're doing very specific jobs anyway, but it definitely was a bunch of jobs that involved like a precise amount of skill. So um, I think it was a lady that was putting the powders in in the clip that you're referring to. So that is like all the different parts to make up the compound, including the graphene, which we wouldn't, at, we weren't actually allowed to see them putting that additive in for whatever reason, that's a closely guarded secret to Vittoria. Um, but yeah, they know exactly, almost by notice. There was a graph on the side, which goes up to green when it's, um, they put the correct amount and it's red if it's not quite right. And I think yellow if they go over or whatever it was. Um, but I think if you do anything like that a number of times, you're gonna get pretty good at it. But the one that really impressed me was the lady at the end actually putting the tire casings together. The way that she was cutting by hand, by eye, this was just <laughs> snip and it was perfect. Literally a perfect cut at the correct angle, made it up perfectly all the way around every single time. We watched the disc with several tires and they didn't even bat an eyelid. This is just, for me, seeing a skilled worker, you know, whether it's like a blacksmith, someone working with leather, whatever it is, if you see someone that's been good at doing that thing, it's always amazing. And I'm pleased to say that you actually referenced that Norco one. Yeah, I did a factory tour at Norco years back and the ladies making the, uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, in fact, making the wheels in there, they would literally put their hands into the pot of spokes, grab out the correct amount by feel, which I still can't get my head around, and go fan them out and drop them into the hub. And they would go in in the right place every time. 
I literally could not believe that. And I'm pretty sure I took some photos. I'm gonna have to try and find that because that was a long time back, probably about 2004 or something like that. Um, but that is a trip I wanna do again. I'd like to go over and see Norco, Race Face, Rocky Mountain, a bunch of those companies around Vancouver. And I've actually got some really cool ideas to do shooting around the North Shore and other stuff. So we'll see if that happens. I'm hoping it might happen this year. Uh, next up is from Raphael Dahl. Nice video. My question, what's the difference between these, uh, I guess, Victoria, and Continental tyres? I mean, is the compound different or what makes the main difference, let's say, between Maxis or, as I said, Conti? Um, okay, so literally the plain difference uh, between these is Continental tyres are handmade in Germany and they're made from their own combination of compounds, in particular the famous one called Black Chili. Now the Black Chili compound is exclusive to Continental and that is one of their closely guarded secrets. So a lot of these manufacturers will have a compound or a specific thing that works for them and they don't want to share that. So you understand that, right? It's a pretty confidential thing, they do that. So Victoria have the same idea. They've got their four compounds, their four C, and they've also got their graphene, which is that additive they put into tire casing to add what they claim makes them much more cut resistant and things like that. So they're, fundamentally they're the difference. So Victoria tires are made in Thailand. Uh, Continental tires are made in Germany, but they're both have got a lot of handmade elements to them. Of course, they're using machines to do parts of the process, but they involve human input to make that happen. It's not like a robotized production by any means. Um, and it'll be the same with Maxxis and a bunch of other tires out there. They're all made in fairly similar ways, but in different parts of the world using different sources and maybe some slightly different techniques for certain parts of the process. Okay, this one's from Matthias Berard. Um, did they tell you how long tires can resist the oxygen or the ozone atmosphere? I actually had to ask Ken Avery back at um, Victoria Tires for this one because I wasn't even sure. Uh, what they said is on the topic of ozone testing, they typically apply a large dose for 24 hours as a baseline and then examine for breakdown. This is done with all tires as well as competitor brands. Um, to compare after the 24 hour baseline. What you have to bear in mind, I think with that, because that doesn't actually tell me a lot, is in that 24 hours, it's a very concentrated form. So that might be what you would actually experience in real life in a couple of years. Um, I'll try and find out a little bit more specifics on that because it seems a bit cryptic to me. Okay, so that's another Ask GMBN Tech in the bag. If you've got any questions, like I said at the beginning, add them in the comments below. Uh, keep the comments separated from the questions by using the hashtag Ask GMBN Tech if you're asking any questions. For a couple more videos, click down here for Tubeless 101. And for another great video, in my opinion, because I think it was a really good one, uh, click down here to see that Victoria factory tour where you get to see where a tire comes from a tree all the way to the trail. Um, great little video, that one. As always, don't forget to share and subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you like this video.